אבל, אבל, לפני שנעבור להנאונסמנט של הנאונסמנט, אני רוצה להזמין את מיסטר ג'ון אליסון, פורמר צ'רמן and CEO of BB&T Corporation, the 10th largest financial service holding company headquartered in the United States. Please, Mr. Ellison. Good evening. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here. This is my first visit to Israel. I've spent the last uh, eight days uh, touring your incredibly beautiful country. What a fantastic success story of entrepreneurship at the national level. And what a bright light in a world that's a little dark. Um, Ayn Rand is the uh, ultimate advocate, the greatest expressure of the ideas that innovation and creativity or the foundation for human well-being. She presented the greatest uh, historic, uh, greatest characters, entrepreneurs in her two historic novels, Atlas Shrugged and Fountain, uh, The Fountainhead. Um, Rand's uh, basic virtues are three virtues that I believe are the foundation not only for individual success and happiness, but also for entrepreneurial and organization success. Our first virtue is, is purpose. For individuals to be successful and organizations to be successful, they have to have a driving sense of purpose, a mission that energizes the individual and energizes the organization and makes them grasp that they're making a difference doing something that they want to do for themselves. Her second great virtue is, is reason. And when she talks about reason, she's talking about truly disciplined rationality, a commitment to understanding the facts and acting consistent with the facts, an unwillingness to evade the facts, kind of in total contrast to politicians. And that kind of mental discipline allows organizations to experiment, fail, learn, and grow. And our final virtue is an interesting one that I'll explore in a minute, is self-esteem in the concept of the pursuit of your personal happiness, and in an organizational context, the pursuit of the happiness of the people involved with the organization. In a political level, Rand was a radical advocate of individual rights, of free markets, of truly limited government. And in that context, she was the great defender of liberty, of freedom. Now, a lot of people play lip service to liberty, but very few people, few people really grasp how critical liberty is to human well-being. Liberty is, in fact, essential for human physical well-being in the economic sense, and maybe more importantly, for human spiritual well-being. In the physical sense, in order to be productive, in order to be innovative, in order to be creative, you have to be able to think for yourselves. If somebody makes you act like two plus two is five, you literally cannot think. And lots of government rules and regulations make people act like two plus two is five. In addition, all human progress, by definition, is based on innovation and creativity. For there to be progress, somebody has to do something better. And something better will always be different. Innovation and creativity is only possible to an independent thinker. Somebody that thinks like the crowd, cannot be innovative, cannot be creative, and not, cannot contribute to human progress. That is why entrepreneurs are so important. Entrepreneurs take the ideas of scientists and engineers and turn them into reality. Without entrepreneurship, there is literally no human progress. Entrepreneurs are heroic in that context. And entrepreneurs are a little different. The best entrepreneurs think out of the box. They think a little differently. They think independently. They don't always go along with the crowd. They're experimenters. They fail a lot and keep trying. For every Google, there are 10,000 failed Googles. Uh, for every Amazon, there are 25,000 failed Amazons. Um, <coughs> you know, uh, I speak on college campuses, and uh, I tell college students that when I was 
at a university, if someone had brought an iPhone up to me and told me all the capacity of this phone and that in my lifetime I'd be able to buy this for a very trivial amount of money, I'd have thought they were literally crazy. You know, I said maybe in 250 years, maybe in 500 years. I don't know how Steve Jobs saw the iPhone, but he did. And in this room, we have a number of entrepreneurs that saw things that other people didn't see. And in that process have created enormous benefits to all mankind. Practically everybody on this planet is better off because of Steve Jobs. Now, Steve Jobs made a lot of money, and so what? That was a very small price to pay. I would certainly pay it for the enormous benefit he provided to, to mankind. Um, so freedom, liberty that allows people to experiment, to think differently, to be true entrepreneurs is essential for human physical well-being. It's also essential for human spiritual well-being in the context of the pursuit of happiness. Um, when I talk about the pursuit of happiness, I'm not talking about having a good time on Friday night, although it's good to have a good time on Friday night sometimes. I'm talking about happiness in the Aristotelian sense of a life well lived. Blood, sweat, and tears happiness. When you're 80 years old, you can look back and say, man, that was tough, and I'm glad I did it. Happiness in that context has to be earned. You cannot be entitled to be happy. To earn the right to be happy, you have to have a sense of purpose in your life. You have to set goals to accomplish that purpose. And you have to work to achieve those goals based on your beliefs and your values as a free and independent person. Now being free doesn't guarantee you will be happy, but if you're not free, it guarantees you will not be happy. So happiness requires liberty. Freedom. Freedom is essential for economic well-being and it is essential for spiritual well-being. And that goes to Rand's last virtue that I want to focus on because I think it's essential for entrepreneurship and it's essential for societal well-being. That is each of us moral right to pursue our personal happiness. Unfortunately, we're pretty consistently given a false alternative. And the false alternative is to take advantage of other people or to self-sacrifice, neither one of which make any sense. In fact, a lot of times when you talk about somebody being selfish, you're talking about somebody that takes advantage of other people. Here's the irony. Taking advantage of other people is not selfish. It's self-destructive. It's self-destructive in two ways. First, you might fool Tom, Dick, and Harry, but they're going to tell Sue, Janie, and Fred, and nobody's going to trust you. And if you're not trusted, you're not going to be successful and you're certainly not going to be happy. At a deeper level, while we all try to influence other people, I'm trying to influence you tonight, if you let go of reality and you try to manipulate somebody else's consciousness, you're going to do much more damage to yourself than you do to them. In my business career, I've had the opportunity of meeting many financially successful people. I have never met anybody that was both financially successful and happy that I think got there taking advantage of other people. I've met some people that had a lot of money that got there taking advantage of other people, and they're the most unhappy people I ever met. Taking advantage of other people is not selfish, it's self-destructive. How about self-sacrifice? That is kind of the broad-based moral code. We're all supposed to self-sacrifice. I won't to ask you to ask yourself what I would argue is the most important question you can ask yourself. And those of you that have children and grandchildren, ask yourself honestly how you'd like for your children and grandchildren to answer this question. Do you have as much right to your life as anyone else has to their life? Do you have as much right to your life as anybody else has to their life? Of course you do. Of course you do. Why would you believe anything different than that? And by the way, if you do not have a right to your life, nobody has a right to their life. Because in the real world, there's only you, 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 you. If none of the yous have a right to their life, no individual has a right to their life. If I don't have a right to my life, and I don't have a right to my life, and I don't have a right to my life, 
nobody has a right to their life. And you therefore are unable to defend anybody's right to their life if you're not willing to first to defend your right to your life. And what happens when that occurs? That's when the tyrants show up. The people that know what's good, what's right, based on some religious belief, some history, some other moral code, and they manipulate and control and do a lot of damage. In order to have a free and prosperous society, you must begin by willing to defend your right to your life, not taking advantage of other people, but allowing them to live their lives on their terms. So taking advantage of other people and self-sacrifice, neither one make any sense. But there is a rigorous, demanding moral code that underlies prosperous societies. I would argue it's a rigorous, demanding moral code that underlies all successful businesses that's essential for entrepreneurial success in the, in the long term. We are fundamentally traders. We trade value for value. Life is about figuring out how to get better together. I ran a business that became very large and very successful from a very small business. And our fundamental commitment, this was a bank, was to help our customers achieve economic success and financial security. And we pursued that commitment with moral certainty. But we also expected to make a profit doing it. Life is about figuring out how to get better together. There are only two stable relationship conditions, win-win and lose-lose. Whenever you get greedy and you set up a win-lose, your partner will get bitter. You see this in spousal relationships and you'll end up in a lose-lose relationship. Whenever you get self-sacrificial and you set up a lose-win, you'll get bitter and you end up in a lose-lose relationship. So in any meaningful relationship in your life, you should ask what's in it for me. But you should also ask what's in it for them. Because if there's nothing in it for them, at the end of the day, there won't be anything in it for you. And business is about figuring out how to create win-win relationships with everybody you encounter, your customers, your employees, your suppliers. How do you create win-win relationships? Uh, and of course, it's in your self-interest. It's towards your happiness to help the people you care about, your family, your friends. But it's also in your self-interest to help the people you work with. It's in your self-interest to help your community because you live in your kind of community. But it's not about self-sacrifice. It's, it's about pursuing your personal happiness. And your ability to pursue your happiness has a big effect on your ability to defend your own life, but also to energize your own employees and organization. Because you know one of the things that I did at bb and was to tell our employees that we really wanted them to be happy. And they had to be happy pursuing our mission, and we had to make a profit doing it. But we were really in the happiness business in that Aristotelian sense of the world. word, And that's, in a certain sense, how you make the world a better place to live and enjoy doing it at the same time. So we've got some great entrepreneurs in this room, uh, people that are going to win the awards and the people that have uh, been signed up for the awards. I thank you for what you do. I thank you for your contribution. You are, to me, are symbols of how the world gets to be a better place to live. You should be very proud of what you've accomplished, and I, I think that in the world we have today, the more symbols that we have, and it's so important that we recognize the contributors of entrepreneurs, uh, contrib contribution of entrepreneurs entrepreneurs because they make so much difference in the quality of life on this planet. Thank you very much.